Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Now, you might be wondering about this and also maybe about this peculiar attire I am currently sporting. I have a very good reason for this. We are in the year 1620, so I'm trying to blend in. Why are we in the year 1620, I hear you ask? Hmm. Well, the reason is I have traveled back in time to understand something about chess. So we find ourselves in Italy, the height of the Renaissance, a time that valued genius above almost everything else. Geniuses like Leonardo da Vinci and indeed the chess player Greco were revered. Men who in secret sometimes harbored thoughts that could be considered dangerous to the nobility and the church who sponsored them. Maybe, just maybe, the princes and the holy men of the church were not all that had importance. Maybe the common pawn had a role to play as well. In this game, Greco, through a flash of brilliance, played a sequence of moves that influence how we play chess even today, 400 years later. With the white pieces, he started off with e4. We still play this. His opponent, who shall not be named, played e5. Symmetrical defense. Greco attacked with the knight. His opponent defended with the knight. And Greco developed the bishop, the holy man. Now, notice that this bishop is potentially attacking this square. His opponent with the black pieces played this knight out to this square. And now, Greco charged in with his knight. The two-piece attack. Is it enough? Well, they are co coordinating an attack on this square right here. There is only one way to defend it. D5 by black. Now this is called the fried liver attack and it is still played to this day. Greco captured this pawn with his own pawn. And today, any grandmaster will tell you that with the black pieces, you have to play the knight out on the rim in this position. This looks strange. Why? Well, this is why this game is so important. Because with the black pieces, his opponent thought, I'm not going to put my knight on the rim. A knight on the rim is dim. Why would I do that? I'm going to capture this pawn right back like this. And now Greco played a surprise. Boom, 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 boom. A surprise has to be unexpected. So Greco sacrificed his knight like this, like a bolt from the blue. But this knight can just be taken by the king, the mighty king, shall capture this knight easily. Well, not as easily, because when the king moves out, the queen follows like this, kabam! And here we see the power of the queen. Who checks the king and also attacks this knight. Hmm. What could the king do now? Well, this knight is attacked. And yes, black has a full knight in the bag. So if the king can get to safety, the game will be won. But this knight is attacked. And if that is lost, the king will just have been called out in the open for no good reason. So the king bravely has to step up and defend this knight. But now we have a king, a nobleman, defending a knight. Now I am not a betting man, but this could lead to the end of the monarchy. You have to do your smithing while the iron is hot. So Greco threw more wood on the fire and called upon his knight, the noble steed, 
in order to attack this knight once more. Now this puts Black in a bit of a pickle and he has to retreat the other knight in order to defend. Not a very happy situation. At this point, Greco played a taunting move, underlining the bareness, the nakedness of his opponent's king by closing the doors to his own castle. Now Black desperately tries to defend the knight with C6. A cowardly move, perhaps, trying to hold on greedily to the material. But now the rook comes into play, lining up against his majesty. Now his majesty is indeed in trouble. The bishop moves out just one square. Why? Because black is crammed. And even though he has more pieces, those pieces are not doing their job. At this point, Greco played d4, a cunning move, coordinating an attack with the pawn and the rook against this pawn right here. His opponent, black in this position, played king over here, saying, you can have this pawn. It's free, but I will be able to escape with my king to safety over here and I will take the knight I captured earlier, put it in the bag and claim a one game. But you see, my lady, Greco did not capture with the pawn. Instead, he captured with the rook. Now this move is very strong. Shaken, his opponent played knight out here trying to threaten this rook, saying, I will capture it. Do you think that Greco cared? Not at all, not at all. Instead, he came in like a mouse with the knight and captured here. Now a lady, such as yourself, might ask, doesn't this hang the rook to the knight? And indeed it does. And you know, the knight is traditionally considered to be a weaker piece than the rook. But Greco was a free thinker, and he thought otherwise. So now, he captured with the pawn, because now the knight crucially covers the escape square. So there is no longer a safe haven for the king. At this point, the king is in check by the small man, the pawn. Can the pawn be captured? No, because there is a check made. Can he hide behind the pawn? If he tries that little maneuver, there is a killer move. Knight over here with a discovered double check. Pawn is still immune, king would have to go here and boom, checkmate like this. So there is only one move that doesn't lose immediately, and that is trying to escape like this. Now the queen makes a long move and throws a check like this. But wait, doesn't this give up the bishop? Indeed it does. And this king, well, he will die, but he will die on a full stomach. First he devoured a knight, then pawns, and now a bishop. But now a further check, this time protecting the knight. And look how we are weaving a mating net and tightening the noose around his majesty's neck. Only one square, this one. And here we return to the role of the small common pawn, the brilliance of Greco's play. Because this simple move checks the king from the pawn and he has nowhere to go. Checkmate and end of game. 400 years ago, four hundred years ago this game was played. This guy played outrageous, brilliant attacking chess, sacrificing pieces left, right, not caring, only caring about the beauty of the game and the checkmate idea he wanted to deliver. He saw flashes of brilliance.
It tells you that genius is undying. It should teach us that there is a very real reason why we recommend this knight move in this position. Because Greco, 400 years ago, has shown that this bishop, together with this knight, on this diagonal, is a very real threat. So what happens after this knight move in this position? Well, I urge you to set up the pieces, find an opponent and find out for yourself.